Welcome to E360 TV, the live streaming and on-demand destination for influential voices and enlightened audiences. We offer trending, grassroots, and purpose-driven content across a diverse range of interests. E360 TV is more than just watching programs. We offer the ability to interact with live shows connecting audiences to real, authentic influencers and storytellers while streaming to millions of devices. Real experiences. Raw conversation. One destination for it all. E360 TV. Good afternoon. Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's 90-minute television special that is going to really impact your life. I'm Dr. Lauren Michaels-Harris. I'm the president of Trajectory TV Network and also an executive producer here at the E360 Television Network. And we are just always so, so thrilled when it comes to these 90-minute television specials that we just are so encouraged um, every time we have one because it is such a way to pour into so many different worthy causes to bring attention uh, to so many worthy voices and also like in today's case to bring something to you that could change your life not just today not just next week but moving way into the future starting with 2024 so uh, Robert A. Lane, an audiobook coach, a good friend of mine, and uh, I happen to know someone who is actually creating their own audiobook right now. Um, they're currently recording right now. So I've been able to speak to this person, this friend of mine who was working with Robert A. Lane um, on the process in just yesterday he said it is absolutely incredible so on behalf of the e360 television network and all of us here at trajectory first of all happy thanksgiving happy holidays to all of you and um for all of you here today to learn uh how you can bring new life breathe new life into your already created or perhaps uh what you are working on or will in the future as far as a literary nonfiction work bringing it to life through the magic of audiobook, uh, we're happy that you're here. Share this out. Uh, it's easy, it's free, and it's painless, and you'll be blessed accordingly. So without further ado, I want to welcome you to today's 90-minute special with Robert A. Lane, audiobook coach. Enjoy. You know what's the greatest benefit of having an audiobook coach? Aside from showing you how to set up your recording space, teaching you how to do an awesome voiceover and narration, and showing you marketing techniques for your audiobook, it's support and accountability. Your coach is your support system, there for you to answer any questions throughout the process. And your coach is your accountability partner to make sure you get the job done.
All right. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad you're joining us here for this very special audiobook masterclass. This is the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook masterclass, a free masterclass that I wanted to share with you to give you some background and tell you what it takes to create an awesome audiobook. So thank you for joining. Um, quick introduction about who I am and what I do. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lauren Michaels Harris, for uh, a wonderful introduction. I am an audiobook coach and producer. Um, I help nonfiction authors turn their book, their wonderful story, in written word and have them take it to the next level, which is narrating your own audiobook. You as the author can narrate your own audiobook and do a fantastic job. And uh, I, in my audiobook coaching program, I uh, take my authors through the process of setup and preparation, teaching them how to do a great audiobook narration and then get them published on Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books. I call it the AAA, Audible, Amazon, and Apple, uh, three distribution platforms that you definitely need to be on to get your audiobook out there. A little bit of background about uh, what I've done in the past, because it does uh, have an effect on what I do now with Robert Lane Coaching. Uh, I've spent, well, I'd say about 30 plus years working in the entertainment industry in, in various facets. Uh, worked in radio, uh, done talk shows, voiceover commercials, uh, music shows, uh, which led to other uh, industry jobs, uh, working in production, post-production, uh, spent 20 plus years as an audio editor, uh, post-production editor, working on films, industrial films, uh, independent films, you name it, TV, uh, videos, and also worked on the corporate side as well. Uh, the last um, roughly 14 years of my career in the uh, entertainment world was working for 20th Century Fox uh, on the studio lot in Los Angeles, California. And uh, that was really more on the corporate side, uh, working as a feature project manager. And uh, so when I left the business, uh, I decided that I wanted to do something different uh, and do something that, that can help people, that I would uh, feel for me, not only just for me being more fulfilling, but to help other people and other authors turn their book into an audiobook, which is what we do now. What led to that was when I started Robert Lane Coaching, uh, I was focused on doing a, a combination of life coaching, career coaching, and helping uh, bus busy professionals or even just people you know, in the workforce really attain true work-life balance and uh, help them uh, navigate through any type of work situation. So uh, with that, I decided to write a book. So I am also a self-published author and I uh, did uh, publish a, uh, a book that is called Lights Action You. Uh, and we can even put up uh, uh, the on the screen a, a picture of the book there so you can check it out. Uh, this was a book that uh, I had written um, pertaining really to the career coaching and life coaching aspect of uh, what I was doing at that time. And uh, so I have this book that I produced and writ wrote and published, uh, which took, uh, I took like 30, you know, within that 30 years of uh, working in the entertainment world, I picked some of my best stories and experiences from this book and uh, with it, tied in some valuable coaching tools and techniques that I was teaching with my life coaching and career coaching uh, to help navigate through a work environment. Uh, so with the book, it's not just your typical uh, self-help book, it's, uh, <laughs> it's stories, you know, it's, and that, that's what makes uh, the book a little more exciting, uh, combined with, of course, uh, teaching tools on how to really achieve work-life balance. So when I published my book, I actually, created an audiobook as well, because I already had that in the back of my mind that I was going to do that. Once the book was published, uh, I had other authors approaching me saying, hey, you know, how do you, how'd you do that? How do you make an audiobook? I want to turn my book into an audiobook. So I decided to uh, make adjustments to Robert Lane Coaching and focus on helping nonfiction authors turn their book into an audiobook. And uh, there's a whole process that uh, you need to go through to do it right and to do it properly. And uh, that's what I do. And I love doing it. It's, uh, it's exciting for me. 
Uh, it is a, um, a thing where I'm able to combine two things that I love, coaching, which is helping people, and uh, an audio editing, which is something that I've done uh, for 20 plus years <laughs> doing that uh, with my own audio production business. And it's great to be able to help these authors create a fantastic audiobook. And the beauty of it is that it's in your own voice. It's in your voice. And that is what's so important because only you can speak your story the way that you intend it to be heard. Uh, in this masterclass, we're going to dive into uh, how you can create an awesome audiobook. And uh, we're going to go through the process of uh, not only the, the physical or practical uh, tools and techniques that you need, but also the, uh, the mindset aspect. Okay, the, the thing that you need to do mentally to make sure that you're in the right frame of mind to narrate a fantastic audiobook. So with no further ado, let's, uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, getting into the masterclass. So uh, the first thing that I want to do is uh, present to you uh, what we're going to go over today and uh, give you a quick overview. All right. So we're going to pull up the slide uh, that talks about our overview. There it is. This is the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook masterclass. Again, uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you have any questions, we're going to do a Q&A uh, at the end of the uh, masterclass. But if you do have some questions, you know, please feel free to you know, pop them into the comments. And uh, if I'm able to get to them, I will uh, during the masterclass. But we'll definitely be handle, handling all those questions for you um, as we uh, finish up and wrap up things as well. All right, so this is what we're going to cover today. First of all, I want to share with you some audiobook industry facts. Uh, there are some stats and facts that I think you'll find incredibly interesting. Um, and then we're going to move into the mindset aspect because you know what? Mindset is everything. Mindset is what makes a great audiobook. When you're in the right frame of mind and you're narrating your book, I'm telling you, that takes your book from just being mediocre or average to being fantastic. And a fantastic audiobook is one that keeps your listener engaged from opening credits to closing credits. So we'll be talking about some mindset techniques that are really going to help you with your audiobook narration. And then we're also going to talk about some of the uh, narration techniques and how to master those techniques, uh, some things that you can do physically to help you do a great narration. And throughout the masterclass, uh, I'll be talking a lot about preserving your author brand. Because every author who's uh, written a book, you've written this great nonfiction book, you've published this book, it's out there in the world to enjoy, and you're having your story told, I consider you a professional. That author brand is you. You're not a hobbyist, you're an author. And that is something you should love and embrace. So you are an author brand. Your book is your product, whether you published an ebook, a paperback, a hardcover, and of course, audiobook. Those are the formats that you offer your products in, which is a great way to be able to reach out and have people find your book, love your book, and be a fan of you as an author. And of course, we will talk about uh, more detail about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program uh, that I teach and uh, give you more information about that a little bit later on. Uh, but for now, let's just jump into some audiobook industry facts. And I think you'll find this pretty interesting. First of all, audiobooks are the fastest growing segment in the book publishing industry. It's amazing how the industry is continually growing and expanding. Uh, in 2022, audiobook sales surpassed $1.8 billion worldwide. That is such a huge amount. You need to be part of that market. And again, you need to conquer that market, uh, which does lead into the next fact and stat, which is that audiobook sales growth has been, over the last several years, increasing 
by an average of 26.4%. So the market is growing and expanding, which is why you as a nonfiction author, if you don't have an audiobook, that is a market that you don't want to ignore because of its growth rate. Now, I find this uh, next stat really interesting. Uh, in 2019, audiobook revenue surpassed ebook revenue. And what's really interesting is the fact that that gap keeps getting wider and wider and wider. So people are looking for audiobooks and actually searching for audiobooks first before they uh, look for an ebook or a paperback or a hardcover. Not that uh, those formats aren't selling, they are definitely. But again, not having an audiobook, you really need to have one because this is a market that does continue to grow, which of course leads into the uh, next fact, and that is about 83% of the population currently listens to audiobooks. And I know so many people, again, who search for audiobooks before they buy the digital version or the paperback or hardcover version. And one more thing, and I probably will mention this later on as well, but this is just important to know that people, when they're searching for an audiobook, they do ask for it by brand name, okay? I can't tell you how many times people will say, hey, is your book on Audible? Hey, can I get your book on Apple Books? They don't say, oh, do you have an audiobook? People, of course, still say that. However, people are now asking for it by brand name, which is why it's really important to make sure that uh, your distribution is on the AAA, Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books, because that's the most popular currently, and that is one that you definitely need to be distributed on. Now, this next uh, industry stat or fact I find incredibly interesting, and I think you as an author um, should embrace this because there are studies that have shown that the comprehension level and the retention level of someone who reads a book versus somebody who listens to an audiobook is the same. I've heard people say, oh, you know, you need to read your book first, or you gotta read it if you're gonna really retain and comprehend what you're reading. You know, audiobooks don't, are not on the same level, and that's not true. They are the same. And what a lot of people uh, do nowadays is that they'll buy your audiobook, and then they'll also buy your ebook or your paperback because they like to listen and read along while they are listening. And this is why it's such a key fact for you to narrate your own audiobook, because it should be your voice that they're listening to because they're reading your book. So with that, let's move on to the reasons why you need to narrate your own audiobook. Why narrate your own audiobook? The number one reason is that only you, as the author, can speak your story the way you intend it to be heard. This is your story. You've put your blood, sweat, and tears into this fabulous book that you've published, and you put it out there in the world. Your purpose, your core reason for writing this book is now out there. So it only makes sense for you as the author to narrate your own book because it's your story. No one can replicate that except you. And that's what makes you unique. And that's what makes you, you. Another great reason for narrating your own audiobook is that you do develop an intimate connection with your listener. They're hearing your voice narrate your book. And this really is, is important, especially if you're a coach and you've written a book or maybe an entrepreneur or a poet or an educator or teacher, it should be your voice telling your story, teaching your coaching program, because that's yours. But when that listener hears you narrate your own audiobook, that connection is developed, that relationship is developed, because they feel that you're speaking directly to them. And that's really important to develop that intimate connection or relationship. Now, by narrating your own audiobook, you also strengthen your brand as an author. Author brand. Remember, I don't look at you as a hobbyist. I look at you as a professional because you have a published book and that does make you the expert in your field. You are the expert in your field or in your space uh, about what you've written your book about. So it does strengthen your author brand, especially when you're the one doing the narration. Now, you doing their narration is key. I know you can hire another narrator. There's a lot of great narrators. I know a ton of awesome voiceover artists and narrators who are fantastic. 
However, having somebody else narrate your audiobook, it's still their interpretation. They're going to narrate it in their style, not yours. So it's so important for you to narrate your own audiobook, especially as a nonfiction author, because that does, again, preserve your style. It preserves your pacing. It preserves your emotion. It preserves your energy and it preserves your unique style. The other thing that I want to mention is that AI is out. When it comes to narrating your own audiobook, AI is not going to cut it. Uh, first of all, Audible uh, has very strict guidelines in regards to wanting a human voice. And if they detect something that sounds uh, you know, computer generated or it's not human, uh, they're going to reject it. They want a human voice. So you need to keep that in mind. Plus, AI is definitely not going to re uh, uh, represent you. How could, how could that replicate your unique style as a human being, as an individual? you got to narrate your own audiobook. Plus, as the way I look at it is that AI or doing something that does that for you is cutting corners. You don't cut corners. You have to make sure, again, you preserve your author brand. And when you wrote your book, did you cut corners? Of course not. Why would you do that in your audiobook? Of course you wouldn't. This is why you need to narrate your own book. AI is not going to cut it. I mean, I, I hear it all the time. I, I go to YouTube and I'm watching some videos and you can definitely tell that's fake. That's AI. That's not a real voice. Oh, well, that one is. You can tell. And when your listener is listening to your book, they're going to know because your emotion is not going to be in it. Your style is not going to be in it. And it's just going to be a very mechanical uh, listen for them. And that's, and that's not good. Don't cheapen your author brand. That's my advice to you. <laughs> okay. Now, remember, narrating your own audiobook does preserve your unique authenticity, your unique integrity, and your unique interpretation. And one last thing that I want to share with you is that audiobooks are a great marketing tool, right? You have one more format in your arsenal of formats, ebook, paperback, hardcover, and audiobook. You're giving a choice to your readers and your listeners. You're expanding your audience. You're giving yourself an opportunity to have multiple revenue streams by having different formats of your book out there for your followers and your readers and listeners to be able to choose from. And that is a great thing. And audiobooks are awesome because they do lead to other business opportunities. I know some authors who've used their audiobook to get speaking engagements, or they combine their audiobook with other special offers. Uh, maybe as a coach, maybe they say, buy my audiobook and I'll give you, you know, 10% off my coaching program. I mean, there's a whole bunch of ways that you can market yourself. So having an audiobook, especially in your own voice, is a great, great marketing tool. All right. So uh, I have something very special for you. And uh, I want to uh, give you a little teaser here. I have a special guest who has written a fantastic book, uh, who uh, is going to be talking about her experience of writing her book. Uh, she went through the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program, uh, and she will share her experience with going through the program as well. And uh, I'm really excited to uh, have her as a special guest. Uh, her name is Mawish Syed. Uh, we're going to bring her on in just a second. I do want to share with you, we're going to take just a little quick video break that I want to share with you something uh, that I feel is important about two uh, phrases that uh, are really, really important when it comes to the mindset aspect of narrating your own audiobook. So we're going to take a quick little video break here uh, and then come back and I'll bring in uh, Mawish Syed to talk about her book and her experience. And I think you're really going to dig it. So check out this video and uh, we'll bring Mawish in, in right after that. There are two sets of very powerful words that you need to have in your vocabulary. Things that you need to say every single day. What are those two words? The first is, I can. For example, I can narrate my own audiobook. The other is, I am. I am a great audiobook narrator. I am a great author. 
Use those two phrases, I can and I am, and create positive affirmations because that's going to build confidence. And that confidence comes through when you do your audiobook narration. So get those affirmations together. Use I can and I am, and you're going to have a great audiobook narration. All right, two very, very important and powerful phrases, I am and I can. Uh, when we get into the mindset aspect of uh, doing a great audiobook narration, uh, we're talking a lot about that and uh, uh, how you can utilize those phrases to create your affirmations uh, to do a great audiobook narration. Mawash Syed wrote this fabulous book called Purgatory to Paradise, How Cancer Helped Me Design an Authentic Life. She is an incredibly visual writer and a visual speaker as well. Um, it was a, a, an absolute pleasure working on her book uh, and creating an audiobook for her. And uh, with uh, no further ado, I would like to uh, bring to the stage Mawish Syed. Uh, thank you so much for joining the uh, masterclass today. Thanks for having me, Robert. Glad, glad you're here. Now, um, You've done some incredible things in your, in your uh, career so far. You're, you're an award-winning uh, fashion interior designer. Uh, you are a best-selling author. This book, uh, Purgatory to Paradise, is an awesome book. So congratulations on being a best-selling author. Um, you are a cancer survivor. And this book is fabulous because you've taken, uh, you take people through that journey of that experience of, of overcoming cancer. And that is incredible and, and so inspirational and awe-inspiring. And, uh, and you are a proud mother. you got a, a great kiddo, uh, Niall, uh, yeah. really cool kid. Glad I had an opportunity to meet him a little while ago. Um, uh, and a good supporter, a great supporter uh, for his mom. <laughs> that is really awesome. Um, a couple other things that, that, that uh, I'm really impressed that I want to share with our audience is that you have been featured in the New York Times. You've been featured uh, in El Decor. You've been featured in Architectural Digest and uh, Hamptons Cottage and Gardens. So your design work is, is very well recognized. Uh, so um, give us a little bit of background of how you even, how did you get into doing design work, both you know fashion and, and interior design? Oh my gosh. That goes back to like in the womb, I think. Um, you know, I, I was uh, basically sewing and creating things since I could remember on the cool veranda floor of my Nani um house in Pakistan. So I feel like textiles are in my blood and creation is in my blood. And I was taught by four generations of women. So that's where it actually started. And from there, um, I came to New York through the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I worked on the Rati project, um, which had just started. And from there, I decided to get my own hands dirty and opened up my East Village dress shop, where I hand, um, basically hand painted and screen printed and hand dyed all my creations. That's awesome. And when it came to uh writing your book, Purgatory to Paradise. Again, an incredible journey that, that you've, you've opened yourself up to, to share. Um, why was it so important for you to write this book? Thanks for that question, Robert. I believe that my journey through cancer really helped me to illuminate certain truths inside. And the title Purgatory to Paradise was that I was living in a form of purgatory and cancer set me free to claim my paradise. And so it really unleashed my voice. I had been doing workshops at the local hospital here with other cancer survivors, basically inspiring them to arrive at beauty and healing through my design techniques. And I thought to myself, this is I can't just keep this to myself. I have to share this with the world. And so that's where it rooted. It rooted in my deep desire to share my wisdom. 
And the story, again, is very visual. You're a very visual person. Well, of course, it all makes sense being a fashion and designer, <laughs> interior designer, all makes sense. But the, the way you, you describe uh, just situations that, you're, that you went through, the journey, um, very, very visual. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the cancer journey? Um, I believe that a lot of people um, suffer a huge stigma with, and I certainly did when I was first diagnosed, that something, I had done something wrong, that, you know, my life as I knew it was no more. And I think I dug deep into my background to find beauty in the here and now. And I am a wholehearted believer in that you are beautiful no matter what stage you're in, whether you're going through cancer treatment, whether you're going through an autoimmune situation, whatever, what I call it in one of my chapters, calamity you're going through can be your catharsis. So I think that it's really important to recognize um, another aspect that sets my story apart is my use of mythology and I liken my cancer to Hades which is the god of the underworld. And I liken myself to Persephone, where I was kidnapped and taken down into the underworld. But instead of it being a tragedy, it's actually a love story. And so I danced the tango with Hades and came out the other side, a goddess. And that is, I was gonna ask you about what inspired you to utilize mythology uh, as an analogy to, uh, go through oh, uh, this, thank your you. cancer journey. Mythology, Robert? Okay, when I had my dress shop, I did the Persephone series where <laughs> I had a Meadow collection and a Hades collection. Meadow was like light, beautiful golden and buff colors and light turquoise and crocus yellow. And then the Hades collection was like deep pomegranate, sapphire, blue and emerald, like things, gems you can find underneath the ground. So mythology has always been a huge passion of mine. And frankly, and I wrote about this in my introduction, it started when I was nine years old. I discovered Greek mythology and it hasn't left me. It's my first love and it really truly is my warp and my weft. It allows me to make sense of so many things that are happening currently. And it gives me a deep connection to eternal truths. So when you were going through uh, your, your cancer journey, what did you feel was one of the, the hardest uh, paths that you had to travel? The, one of the hardest paths I had to travel was being a single mom and having to still work. I have my own design firm and to continually put you know, and I talk about this in my book, this idea of a, a good woman or the false virtue of a good woman is that you mask your pain and you, you become strong and you want to hide everything. And I think the authenticity part, um, which is in my subtitle, is really about being true and um, honest with yourself and allowing your child to see you go through that process instead of hiding and protecting them um, and to really share that and to share it with depth and nuance and clarity, that takes a lot when you're going through it yourself. So that was a big challenge while I was going through cancer, being a mom. Right, and, and, I, and I would think that, uh, you know, having some type of support system is something that you really need to go through that journey. And I know that you talk about this in your book. And when I was listening, uh, when I was editing your audio book and just listening to the story, your book, by the way, was one of those that, you know, you'd send me a chapter, I'd clean it up, do my thing, make sure it's to the specs that it needed to be for publication. And I, every time when I do the final output of that, I'm listening to this chapter and I'm like, I'm, I'm in it, man. I am in, I, I'm it's so engaged into the story. And then, I'm like, where's the next chapter? Come on, Malin, let's get that next chapter in. What happens next? You know, because it was so engaging. And when I get sucked into the story, that just tells me that you as an author, you did a great job. You did your job narrating your book because you, you got me hooked. 
And that was just such a great thing. Uh, but um, again, in regards to uh, a support system, I know you, 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 had, you had a little bit of struggle with that uh, in your book about having true support from, especially from the people that, that were supposed to be close to you. Yeah, you learn a lot. I mean, I, I found really who was truly there. I mean, people help sometimes for their own reasons. And I think it really, I use the word decant. So it decanted a lot of um, toxic energies and parasitic energies in my life that um, didn't belong. So, and, and one thing, Robert, I wanted to add as you were telling me, I never doubted that it was gonna be my own voice narrating this book. I never, I always knew that I was going to narrate this book. And I wanna mention that the oral tradition, I grew up with an oral tradition in Pakistan and being told stories that were passed down from generation to generation. Some of them I mentioned in my book, but this idea of your voice it has a certain vibration, it has power, it has a body of its own. And again, when I speak, it's, and when I write, and you said I was visual, I use every single sense. I use scent, I, and I do this with my designs. I use all my senses to create an experience. And I think the vibration of our voice, our tonality, our ability to emote is really powerful. So. For me, I got lucky with you. I got so lucky working with you. It was such a pleasure. And one of the things you taught me is, and, the, and this is really key, mindset is everything. Sometimes I was like suffering imposter syndrome, like, oh my God, can I really do this? Is this, is this possible? And you're just very kind-hearted, very empathy, empathetic encouragement allowed me to create that space for myself to just keep going. And it was an emotional journey too, because I'm explaining some, something that is so profoundly personal and transformative. And, you know, after I would listen to the edits, I would cry. I was, it was so powerful for me to hear my own voice speaking my story out loud. I can't express that enough. Oh, thank you. Thank you for, for the compliment. And it, it, obviously, you know, it, it was an incredible joy working on your book. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, the actual process of recording? Uh, you know, when you set up your space, you know, was it easy to set up, you know, and, and, and uh, being able to work, you know, on your schedule? How, how was that uh, for you? I was shocked at how attainable, how accessible, and frankly, how easy it was. It, I thought it was, you know, you have to go into the special studio and you have the special equipment. You told me exactly what I needed and, you know, the exact order of how to set it up. I mean, even the picture of what the dial on the mic should be at, you did that. So I think it's, it was great for me to have that level of accessibility and demystify like it, you demystified the whole process. And yeah, it was really, really wild. Of course I had to, you know, I'm in New York city. So the city noises were always around. I always had to pick times when there was no construction outside or a jackhammer. But I think also that's part of the great process of doing this for yourself. You really learn so much. How did you, uh, how did, how did you feel about, doing the actual recording where where, where was your your confidence level when you began to when you you know finally finished your book great question um of course in the beginning i was nervous um and i think that level of hesitation was you know if you look at something that's rough hewn and you take some sandpaper to it and you make it smoother, smoother and smoother. So the sandpaper got finer and finer and the quality, I think of my words also became more polished. And I think that, again, see my visual connection with, with that. So I think it's really important to recognize that you will go through that process for yourself. Um, of course, I heard the difference between the beginning and, and towards the end. But at the same time, I think it was perfect because 
it was a part of my journey of starting my cancer journey and then where I ended. So I became more confident in, in, in that narration too. And when it came to, uh, you know, cons consistency is also a very key point in regards to doing an audiobook. You want to have the same level of, of energy that you have, you know, again, from opening credits to closing credits, you want to have that same, that same energy there. Um, how was that for you? Was it was it easier? Was it easy for you to to maintain that that consistency throughout your book? I think so. Um, I did the same kind of schedule that I did for writing my book. Um, I picked a time really early in the morning, um, before you know the day started, just even before dawn to focus. And I think that once you are committed and you schedule that time in for yourself how I see it, it's me time. It's, it's something that I'm giving myself. This is purely for me. And that is what kept me going and keeping me consistent, if that makes any sense. All right. Um, so you've recorded your audiobook. You've got it published. You're on Audible, you're on Amazon, you're on Apple Books. And so now, you have this this great and it is a work of art. I consider audiobooks a work of art because you know it is you as an artist, as an author, and for all authors, you are an artist, uh, and your voice is art. So it's 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 a wonderful thing to hear uh, you and hear authors narrate their own audiobook. So you have this audiobook now. How have you been able to utilize this format uh, to uh, move your business forward? Thanks for that. Um, I have been speaking a lot more. Um, I spoke at uh, Mount Sinai here and back in June for their Survivor's Day Gala. And it really gave me a lot of confidence to be able to share my truth um, through my voice. And frankly, I really love speaking and connecting with people through my voice even more than ever. That's great. And so uh, you have your audio book, you have a, a, your, your ebook, you have your, your paperback. So you have a, a variety of formats that your book is in now. Um, what's, what's, what's on the, the plate? What do you have uh, in store for, uh, for the future? Are you focusing uh, still on doing your, your fashion design and interior design work? Or are you now moving towards uh, doing more speaking engagements and, and uh, you know, helping people through their cancer journey. Where, where's the road taking you now? Thanks, Robert. Well, I'm lucky enough to pick and choose the projects that I work on um, for interiors. And right now I'm really excited to share a whole new course that I have designed nice. for cancer patients and providers to connect with all my over two decades of designing fashion and interiors to create a beautiful healing environment. I also am certified in quantum biology. So I am now looking at the epigenetic factors of what makes your home good for you or bad for you and how beauty can actually heal you. That's, that's really great. You know, because you know, that, that is something that, uh, and I don't know of any other you know, interior designer who takes that aspect into consideration with what they do and what they provide their clients. Because, you know, health is so important. And there are aspects of health that, that we don't think about. You know, the world does not revolve around big pharma. There are other alternative ways to take care of your health and to be healthy and to stay healthy and to maintain your health uh, than, than, you know, having to pop pills all the time. And that's, that's not, you know, that's not the right route to go. And I think what you're doing is pretty fantastic that you're incorporating uh, an alternative way of healthy living and combining it with beauty, beauty and health. It's not just, you know, physical beauty. It's, it's your, your surroundings. It's the ambient. It's everything that, that comes together. Uh, that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And I would furthermore say 
your beauty it, from a quantum perspective is about divine alignment on a cellular level. And I'm exploring that from a design perspective. What does that actually look like? And how can I create a home that is beautiful and good for you? And when it comes to you as an author, because you are an author, your book, Purgatory to, Pres uh, to Paradise, is, is your product, and you are an author brand. Yes, there it is. It's a great book. Um, what do you have plans? Do, are, you, are you planning on, on writing another book? Um, what, what's in the future for Mawish Syed, the author? Oh my gosh, well, you and I are going to be working together a little bit more, Robert, because there are more books in me right now. And Purgatory to Paradise is really my entree. It's my introduction to um, really extrapolate the pomegranate seeds of wisdom that I talk about. And every single thing that we discuss even now is going to be blooming to life in its own way. So I'm really looking forward to working with you again. Oh, great. I, I'm looking forward to uh, reading the next book and having you uh, narrate that next audio book. Um, again, you have a very unique style and this is what I'm talking about. And I, I want people to, to really grasp this and embrace this and understand that you, the way you talk, the way you speak, the way you present yourself is unique. This is what makes you, you. And this is what makes your book, when you turn it into an audiobook, so much better being the author to narrate your own book. Uh, down below on the screen there, that link is actually to uh, your page there on Amazon to get Purgatory to Paradise. Uh, definitely check out this book and uh, get the audio book because Mawish's narration is just a, a joy to listen to. And I'll tell you, Again, when I was working on the book and, and doing the final mixes and outputs of the chapter, and then when we got to uh, some of the uh, uh, chapters about uh, the lack of support from people that were close to you, I was getting mad. How could that person do that to her? <laughs> you, know, you get so emotionally involved into the story. <laughs> but, that, you know, but that's what makes a great story. That's what makes a fantastic story. You did such a terrific job with the editing too. Like really, truly, um, I'm really so grateful. And it's funny because, um, you know, while I'm cooking, I'm listening to myself and I'm like, oh my God, I said that. Like that again, it just really drives home the power of our voice. And you're so right. Each and every single one of us is unique and grounding into your own beauty and your own unique voice is something that we all should really explore. 100% agree. And, uh, you know, again, first of all, I want to thank you for, for taking time to uh, speak today on the masterclass. Uh, I appreciate you sharing your experiences, uh, not only with the journey that you went through that you talk about in your book, but, uh, you know, thank you for sharing about your experience of doing an audiobook and that you can do it and that you do have the voice to do it. And that's what makes you know, your book unique. Uh, again, so much uh, appreciation for, for you. And, and it was of course a joy to, to work with you as well. Likewise, likewise. Thank you so much for having me. And I have to say today is a very special day. It's my anniversary for um, my last day of cancer treatment. So it's kind of wild how things come together that way oh absolutely oh and one more thing that i do want to say uh that i, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the show is uh, those of you who uh, are celebrating veterans day today is officially veterans day uh, i just wanted to uh, uh offer uh my thanks for your service so just uh, wanted to mention that as well Mawish, thank you so much for, for, uh, for being here uh, and sharing your story. Really, really do appreciate it. Um, what we're gonna do uh, next is I have another uh, quick video that I wanna share with you. Again, these videos do uh, pertain to the mindset aspect of what it takes to do a great audiobook narration, because again, Mindset is key, and it is so important to be in the right frame of mind. So uh, we're going to uh, jump into that, and then we're going to really get into our deep dive of how to do an awesome audiobook 
narration. So uh, don't go away. The video is coming up next, and then we will be back to do our deep dive. <laughs> And the biggest barrier is fear. And the biggest barrier is fear and lack of confidence. Mm. And as your coach and as part of the audiobook coaching program, we spend time talking about mindset. We talk about putting yourself in the right frame of mind, getting yourself grounded, getting yourself focused, building confidence. All those things that, that, that a life coach <laughs> teaches you is part of the program because we encompass the whole thing. It's not just hit record and then start narrating. There's so much more uh, that's involved for you to do a great audiobook. You don't want to be mediocre. You want to be fantastic because this is your brand. This is your brand. Mm -hmm. You do not cut corners. Did you cut corners when you wrote your book? Of course not. Why would you even think about doing that with your audiobook? Don't cheapen your product. Don't cheapen your brand. Make sure people look at you as the expert all the way around, 100%. All right, again, so important. So important is mindset. And that's what we're gonna jump into right now uh, and talk about preparation and mindset. And you do have to ask yourself this question, are you in the right frame of mind? Are you in the right frame of mind? Doing an audiobook, uh, again, there's a lot of moving parts to creating an audiobook, and I'm going to get into some of the details about that in, in just a bit. But one of the most important aspects is mindset. It's mindset. You have to be in the right frame of mind. You have to make sure that you're ready to give the best uh, narration performance that you can possibly give. But uh, if you're not there mentally, it ain't gonna happen, okay? So we're gonna talk about things that you can do to uh, put yourself in the right frame of mind. So before you begin, before you even hit that record button, confidence is key. That is number one, confidence is key. You have to believe in yourself. And to believe in yourself, you have to love your voice. You know, I, I hear, uh, there's a couple of things that I hear all the time from authors. One of them is, ah, oh, I, I hate my voice. I don't like how I sound. Uh, oh, I don't, have, I don't have a good voice. Uh, I can't do this narration. That is a false belief. And like I mentioned in that first video you saw about those two phrases about I can and I am, you can narrate your own book. You are a great narrator, but you have to love and embrace your voice. I mean, think about it. We have this great, this great thing right here, this head. This head is a resonator. This is what creates your voice. Your, your voice box you know, feeds the resonator and then it's out into the world. And I know a lot of people, they, they, they hear their voice and they're like, oh man, that's, I didn't know I sounded like that. You sound fine. There's nothing wrong with your voice. You have a great voice because that again is part of your uniqueness. That's what makes you you, but you have to have confidence. In the uh, Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program that I teach, we, we spend time dealing with this and talking about confidence because you have to believe in yourself. Uh, I did a podcast uh, last Thursday, and the topic was about crushing fears, crushing your speaking fears, crushing your narration fears. It's just crushing fears in, in general. You need to crush these fears. And what these fears are, are the habits and the false beliefs that you tell yourself. Because again, 95% of your brain is, is powered and run and driven by your subconscious. When you're feeding uh, negative thoughts and negative habits into your subconscious, you're ingraining a, this bad habit that you have to crush. You have to get rid of that. Uh, that's why, again, uh, affirmations are, are, are so important because you need to say them and you need to believe in them. So building confidence is key. Uh, I'm going to share with you something. Uh, I have a lot of catchphrases, by the way, and I'm going to be sharing a few of them with you today. Um, and one of them is this when it comes to uh, dealing with fears. Fears are barriers and barriers stop you from moving forward as an author. 
to the next step. If you haven't considered doing your audiobook or have a fear of narrating an audiobook yourself, we got to crush those fears. Okay. So this is uh, something that, that I teach uh, my clients when we go through the audiobook coaching program. And is this, if there is something that is stopping you uh, nine out of 10 times, it, it's some kind of fear. Okay. Something that's making you uncomfortable. That's making you uneasy. That um, gives you sweaty palms and tense uh, feelings in your stomach. Well, we need to address those fears. So this is how you do it. Uh, my catchphrase is this, face it, embrace it, purge it, replace it. The four steps are there for you to conquer your fears and build that confidence, build that belief in yourself and in your voice. The first thing, of course, is to face your fears. You face your fear by acknowledging it. It's there, you know, and you just have to face it. You acknowledge it. Now, the second part is embrace it. And I say embracing fear. Yes, embracing fear is important because I don't use the word, oh, I'm going to confront my fears. Confront is confrontational. I look at that as a negative. Don't confront. Don't be confrontational to your fear. Embrace your fear. And when you embrace your fear, what you're doing is that you're acknowledging that fear. When you embrace your fear, you, you what you need to do is strip away the layers. You strip away the layers and get down to the root cause of what it is that is causing this fear in the first place. So for example, oh, you have a fear of speaking. Okay. Oh, uh, you know, I, I hate talking in public. I don't like talking in small groups. You know, I, I hate when, when somebody puts me in the spotlight and I don't, <laughs> it's like, ah, don't want to be there. Think about that for a second. What is causing that fear? What is making you feel so uncomfortable? Strip away those layers, get down to the core reason. Uh, you know, for example, uh, I remember as a kid, because you know, I when I grew up, I was very shy and very introverted. And I hated it. I hated it when my mom would put me on a pedestal at a party or something, play your guitar or sing or, or do something or <laughs> what. And, and it was so nerve wracking. And that experience ingrained into my subconscious a negative emotion. And this did create a fear. And I had to learn how to overcome these fears. I didn't have the tools and techniques that I have now and that I teach my clients. So, you know, it was a, it was a journey for me to figure out how to do it. But, you know, it could be it could be one thing when you were a kid that happened way back in the past, or maybe it's something that happened recently, or maybe it's a few things. But when you identify, right, you face the fear, you identify that fear, okay, and then you embrace it by pulling away the layers to find out what is the root cause of why you feel so uncomfortable. Now you can go to the third step, which is to purge it, purge that fear. And what that means is you're coming to terms, like you've come to terms with this, this fear that you have. When you come to terms with the fear that you have, you can move that aside. And then you do step number four, which is replace it. So you're moving, the, as I say purging, so you're moving that, that fear aside, and now you are going to replace it with positive affirmations. Your subconscious, again, is what what is really running everything that you do. Uh, you have to be very, I'm gonna say conscious. <laughs> you do have to be very conscious about the fuel that you're providing, that you're feeding your subconscious with, right? What is the fuel that you're using that is driving your subconscious? What is the fuel that you're using to drive your subconscious? Is it negativity? Because remember, your habits and your belief systems are the fuel that, that drives and power your subconscious. So you have to be very aware of what you're feeding that subconscious mind. If you're doing uh, negative this and negative that, I hate my voice, I sound awful, I can't be a narrator, uh, I'm not even a good writer. You know, that's where imposter sy syndrome comes into play. You need, you, you, are, you are ingraining a false belief, that this is a, a false belief system. And when you are saying that over and over and over and over, what you're doing is you are 
providing the wrong fuel, okay? You're providing the wrong fuel. You don't want to put that negative energy into your subconscious because you're ingraining it, right? It's like going back and forth in this uh, uh, deep cut in your subconscious and that you don't want to do it. So move that aside, replace it with positive affirmations and use those two phrases. I am, I can, I am a great author. I can narrate my own audiobook. I have a great voice. I love my voice. Own it. Love it. Embrace it. Appreciate it. Because when you start saying those affirmations and write them out and post them everywhere, right? You know, I have my my author clients when they go through my program, I have them write out 10 affirmations and I have them print them out and I want them to physically write it and, you know, Put it in front of your computer, put it on the refrigerator, stick it on your bathroom mirror, put it somewhere so you can read them and reread them and do it over and over and over. Now remember, it's not just reading it that's gonna build that confidence, it's feeling it. So you have to say these affirmations until you feel it. You have to feel it. Once you feel it, then you believe it. And when you believe it, now you're putting the right fuel to power your subconscious. And the more you do that, the more uh, positive fuel that you're putting in there, the more confidence that you're going to have in your voice, the more compelling and authentic your narration will be. So confidence is key and believing in yourself and not letting any types of fear become a barrier to stop you from moving forward to narrating your own audiobook because you can do it. Love your voice, own your voice, have confidence. You can do it. The next thing that I wanna uh, share with you is to ask yourself this question. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? And I don't mean, uh, you know, oh, uh, I'm in uh, you know, the, the health and wellness space. So I'm talking to, you know, people who are trying to lose weight or I'm talking to, um, you know, uh, if you're a career coach or if you're a relationship coach, I'm not talking about a genre. I'm talking about being very specific. Who are you talking to? Because when you're doing your narration, you want to have somebody that you are talking to. Is it is it a husband, a wife, a boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other, uh, another family member? Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a coworker. Have somebody specific in mind when you do your audiobook narration. Who are you actually talking to? Put their picture up there on the screen so you can see them and talk to them. Because when you're narrating your audiobook, when you have somebody that you're comfortable with and that you are talking to, you want to be able to be relaxed, right? Being comfortable and conversational and being relaxed makes for a better narration. And that does lead into the next step uh, that's actually on the previous slide, which is um, being authentic. You gotta be authentic. And that brings the authenticity out when you are doing your audiobook narration. So when you have somebody that you're talking to, it makes you comfortable, it makes you more conversational, and it makes you definitely more authentic. And then the last thing on this slide that I do wanna talk about a little bit is to be present. To be present, to be focused, and to be grounded, to be aware of where you are and what you're doing. So when you're recording your audiobook, you're not worrying or thinking about anything that has happened in the past. You're not worrying or, or thinking about uh, anything that you need to take care of in the future. You need to be in the present moment. You need to be focused in the now. All right, that's why uh, I have my clients carve out specific time. I always even talked about carving out specific time to uh, do your audiobook, to narrate your audiobook. And you stick to that time, and that time is a non-negotiable, okay? Which means that, all right, I'm gonna record my audiobook from 8 to 9 p.m., uh, you know, Monday through Friday. Great. I'm gonna hold you to that as your coach, <laughs> okay? Because I'm your accountability partner too. Um, and that's your time. So you are present and focused to do what you need to do to get grounded and in the right frame of mind before you hit that record button. Another way to get yourself into the right frame of mind, and again, I'm talking about these intangibles because the intangibles are what makes a great audiobook. That's why mindset is so, so crucial. 
you need to tap into your purpose. You need to tap into your why. Why did I write my book? Why, why was it so important for me to write this book and to put it out there in the world to, to, to read? And now I'm going to do an audiobook and put it out there into the world for people to hear. Why is that so important? That feeling that you had when you wrote your book is the same feeling, is the same energy that you bring into your audiobook narration. That's what makes an average audiobook be a fantastically awesome audiobook because that intangible, it's not something you can touch, but it is something that you can feel. That intangible brings in a great narration that helps with your authenticity, that helps, again, preserve your author brand. It, it helps you do a fantastic narration that will keep your listener 100% engaged and just really compelled into your story. So very important the mindset aspect. Now, the practical narration techniques that we're going to talk about uh, is also important because this is a really, really, really great thing. You uh, can take some of these uh, tips to help you do a great narration. Obviously, the first thing, as we talked about, is mindset. Super important. But now let's talk about more of the physical aspects and just things that you can do to help yourself um, do a great narration. Okay, so the first thing is... Um, putting yourself in a com comfortable space. When you create your recording space, uh, and when I talk about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program, uh, I will uh, go into more detail about how to create your own recording space and what I do to help you do that. Uh, but you set up your space, all right? This is, um, this is your audiobook, I don't want to say man cave, <laughs> but you know, this is your space. You want to feel comfortable. You want to make sure that it's quiet. And you want to make sure that you're not going to be uh, disturbed or someone's going to interrupt you. So when you carve out that time, again, I'm going to work on my audiobook from 8 to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday. That's your time. If there's other people in the house, if you have kids, family, just tell them, hey, I'm working on my audiobook. I don't want to be disturbed. And then you have this little thing, right? It's called a cell phone. And it goes out. You are not having any other distractions uh, with you when you're recording your audiobook. So just, just move that cell phone away. You don't want that distraction. You want to keep yourself present and focused and in the moment so that you get into your narration zone, right? You get into your, your vibe and, and you want to bring that energy in and feel comfortable doing it. That's why having a very comfortable and quiet space that you set up as your recording space is really, really important. The next thing is to uh, also, stay, whether you're sitting or you're standing, just good posture, good posture. Uh, when I recorded my audiobook, I actually did it standing up. Uh, I have my shoes off. Well, actually, I have my shoes off right now just because it helps me stay present and grounded uh, for me. And uh, uh, narrating my audiobook uh, standing up helped uh, me also present uh, the energy that I wanted to bring to the table as well. Uh, but, you know, sitting down is great. <clears throat> Whatever, again, is comfortable for you, but just have good postural form, you know, like, like a singer. A singer, you know, doesn't sing uh, all hunched over, right? They want to be able to pull in the air and expand their lungs and diaphragm and be able to, to sing their heart out. Uh, you know, and, and the, the same physical concept is applied when you do your audiobook narration. So it's very important to have good posture and uh, uh, definitely uh, be able to breathe, take in the air, keeping your feet roughly shoulder width, flat on the ground. And there you go. You're in a, a good physical uh, uh, form. You've got a good physical form to do a great audiobook narration. The next thing is just super, super important, and that is to stay hydrated. You have to stay hydrated. And, I mean, we got to do this anyway to, to, to take care of our bodies. But when you're doing an audiobook narration, if your mouth is dry, man, that causes, that causes some issues. You're going to have sounds, mouth noises, be, you know, those kind of things. They're going to be in your narration, which you don't want that to be in there. 
You want to make sure that your body is hydrated, that your mouth is hydrated, because that does eliminate a lot of those mouth noises that can become very irritating. Because your audiobook, you know, is going to be, uh, you know, maybe it's a, you know, two, three hours, four hours. I just worked on an audiobook that was almost nine hours long. Well, that's a long time to hear somebody do mouth noises. <laughs> you don't want to hear that. All right. So that's that's another thing that's really, really important. Um, I want to also talk about uh, something that uh, I want to grab my book here for a second. Uh, that that's important to to share with you, and that is um, what it takes to create your audiobook, and just something for you to understand in case you weren't aware. When you're recording your audiobook, everything that that is recorded is done in segments and in sections. So, for example, um, my book has 14 chapters in it. Well, that was 14 separate audio tracks that I recorded. Uh, there's opening credits, there's uh, introduction, forward, uh, there is a, de a dedication page, there could be acknowledgments, closing credits, uh, anything else that, that you may have in your book. Well, everything is recorded separately on separate tracks. And that's really good to know because, you know, some people think, oh, I just hit record and just, you know, grab my book and start narrating and that's it. No, you, you do it in sections. So that's why I say there's a lot of uh, moving parts in doing your audiobook narration. Uh, but uh, I wanted to share that with you because um, I wanted you to understand, and it does make it a little bit easier, by the way, when you do record that way, because then you, you could say, oh, I'm only working on chapter three today. And you can just focus on that and do a great narration. And then the next day, do the next chapter or however you want to do it. Um, I'm going to show you something. I have uh, 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 my studio set up that I wanted to show you. Uh, we're going to go over to the, uh, the, the, the Pro Tools studio. And uh, I want to show you what it looks like to do your audiobook. Now, what you see here at the top of the screen, uh, this is somebody's audiobook. And uh, let's see, I'm going to shrink it down a little bit just to let you see. You see all these tracks here? This, this is somebody's audiobook, and that's what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to change the size of this just so you can see uh, all the tracks. So that's that's chapters, that's open opening credits, closing credits, uh, you name it. Uh, but that's what your audio files look like. So, uh, for example, if you uh, expand this, this is what your audiobook looks like in audio waveforms. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger here for you. You can check this out there. So when I am doing my thing, uh, as your editor, after you send me these audio files, I go in and I listen to uh, these tracks and uh, I make sure that what's happening in between words and in between phrases, that there's not any noises that don't belong. I edit those out uh, without changing your unique style, of course, but anything that doesn't belong in there, I'll edit that out so that it sounds nice and clean. Um, but that is just something that I wanted to show you to give you a little bit of a, a behind the scenes look of what I do as an audiobook coach and producer to create your audiobook. All right. Um, so getting back to uh, our, our list here, um, smiling smiling, smile when you narrate. Now I understand that could be something um, that maybe feels a little funny or uncomfortable, but I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't worry about it because again, this is something subtle and a smile is a, one of those other things that, that isn't intangible. That's a thing that you can't physically touch, but boy, you can feel it, you can feel it. So uh, for example, I'm just gonna read something uh, on the from the back of my book, okay? so. If you're just doing this, how to always be present, aware, and never miss opportunity. Okay, great, but that doesn't really do it for me. I'm like, oh, you know, there's, there's not a, no energy in that. When you smile, it brings the energy forward. And it can be subtle, you don't have to force a smile. But if you just put on a little smile and you just say, how to always be present, aware, and never miss opportunity. It makes a world of difference. And even though it may seem subtle, 
your listener will pick up on those intangibles. That's why having that energy is so important. And that's why bringing your authentic self to your audiobook narration is so important and is so key. All right. Um, the next thing that I do want to talk about, and we did talk about that with Mawish a little bit, was consistency. Having consistent pace and flow. And again, uh, energy comes, uh, comes through as part of that. And you want to be consistent from your opening credits to closing credits. If your energy dips, your listener's going to know that. If you feel tired, your, inner, your, and, you know, your listener's going to hear that. So you want to be consistent with how you're doing your narration delivery. And again, boy, this is a big one. Being aware of external noises. Sometimes we don't think about that. But when you're recording your audiobook, and Melrose had a great example when she was saying, you know, she lives in New York City and she had to record her audiobook at times when, uh, you know, it wasn't so noisy and busy out there. And that's really important because you need to be aware of your outside external uh, environment. So when you're recording your audiobook, and you know a plane flies by that's something you have no control over or maybe you know the guy across the street fires up the lawnmower or the leaf blower and you hear it in your headphones well that's going to be recorded in your audiobook and that's something you don't want to have in there so just be aware of external noises external sounds and you'll be able to uh, pick up on that when you hear it and it's just stop take a moment and then you can continue on the next thing that I want to uh, talk about uh, is about uh, recording levels and mic placement. So we're going to step over to uh, the equipment uh, section for uh, a second here. All right. I just want to make sure, you, can, can you still hear me? Okay. Are we good? All right. So... What I want to do is I want to show you uh, mic placement, okay? We'll talk about that first. When you have your microphone up, okay, where you have it placed is key. Some people are too close. Some people are too far. You need to have a, you need to have a decent distance to your microphone, okay? So... Um, Mic placement is key. The other thing is headphones. When you're recording your audiobook, all right, you have your, your headphones on, and what you hear and what you see on your audio levels when you're recording, what happens is that you lock into your brain. I have my this is where I am with my microphone, this is how what it sounds like, and this is what my audio levels look like. And what happens as you do it more and more is that you can tell if something changes. If you start backing away from your mic, you'll hear it. If you're too close to your mic, you'll hear it. You want consistency, especially with the sound. So when you see your levels and you hear your levels and you know where you're, you're facing, you can just focus on reading your audiobook and just scrolling through your pages and doing your narration and not even have to worry about watching levels because you can hear it. You know what sounds good and what doesn't sound good. So it's really important to uh, lock that into your brain when you set up your uh, system. And of course, in the, you know, in the audiobook coaching program, I go through all that with you. So it's, it's an easy setup. Um, all right, we're gonna head on back to the main camera. All right, uh, so again, mic placement and recording levels are, are key. Uh, a couple of things that I want to mention is, uh, again, taking a break. If there's external sounds, you take a break, all right? <laughs> Just take a break. Um, if you're getting fatigued, now this is really important. If you're feeling tired, step away. Take a breather, go outside, get rejuvenated. Find your, your, your mojo, get into your vibe. All right, and then get back into recording if you want to continue recording. If you are just feeling tired and fatigued, call it a day. Do it the next day. It's okay. It's okay. Just take a break because remember, consistency is key. You want to sound the same from your opening credits to your closing credits. So just make sure that uh, you're not just driving yourself into the ground physically or emotionally. 
Okay. And then finally, you could just practice, practice, practice your narration. Uh, I do that all the time. Uh, when I'm, when I did my audio book, uh, when I was hired to be a narrator, um, I definitely practice before I hit the record button. You know, it's like going to a, a recording studio and, and you know, uh, a band rents a studio and they're paying 200 bucks an hour to record their album. You know, the guitar player is like, oh, uh, I need, um, give me an hour. I gotta, I gotta practice this riff before we record. It's like, why would you do that? Why would you like throw away your $200 an hour <laughs> studio time practicing when you should be recording? So just do a little bit of practice, get yourself into your, your zone, and then you can go ahead and hit that record button. All right, so let's uh, let's move on uh, to the next slide. And I do want to share this with you because uh, I do have a free audiobook narration reference guide. Uh, down at the bottom there, you see the ticker? You can grab your free guide. It uh, lists out a lot of the things that I've talked about today. And uh, it's a little PDF download you can have as a, as a great reference when you're recording your audiobook. You could also grab it on Robert Link Coaching as well, but uh, there's your link. Grab your free guide, okay? <laughs> grab your free guide. All right, um, I do want to talk about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program uh, in a little more detail. Uh, actually, we can even bring this uh, a little bit uh, bigger on the screen so that people can see it, because I know the words are, are a little bit small. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want you to be able to, to see that. Um, the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program uh, is a six-week do-it-with-you program, which means that I am your coach, and I am also your audio editor, and I am also the person who uploads your files for publication into Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books. And I'm with you every step of the way. That's what do-it-with-you means, okay? And I will take you from narration to... Uh, preparation to publication on the AAA, all right? The AAA, that is Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books, three distribution platforms that you definitely need to be on. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the VIP one-on-one coaching uh, program. That's the plan that I have that uh, I find uh, more people seem to be uh, opting into that, which is great because I love working with you one-on-one. -on -one. And you do work directly with me. I don't just throw you to some, you know, team member or just someone else. No, you work with me directly. Uh, and that's uh, important because I do want to work with you and help you create an awesome audiobook. Now, part of the program uh, is making this as simple and easy and hassle-free for you as an author as possible. So I do provide the equipment that you need to set up your own recording space. It's part of the program. I send the equipment to you and you don't have to send it back, it's yours to keep. Uh, matter of fact, we can go over to the, the equipment uh, section, uh, page or uh, camera, I should say. <laughs> and uh, let me show you this. This is, this, this is what I send you. This is a, a great uh, mic by Rode. Uh, it's a podcast mic. It's a great for voiceover. It's great for narration. A lot of people use this mic. This is what I send to you. Uh, I also send you professional headphones. These are great Sony headphones. These are professional. I like these headphones because they are accurate. What you hear is what you're getting. It's not, you know, colored by having too much bass or too much treble. It's very accurate. So these are really, really good headphones. I also send you this. This is a sound isolation screen. And this is really cool because this goes over your microphone and it has this pop filter, which is in the middle of it. So you take this screen and you grab your mic and you put the mic into the screen. And what this does is it eliminates any sound from bouncing off the walls and coming back into your microphone. It really protects it. And then when you throw on the, uh, the pop filter on top of it, you have yourself a great recording studio without having to worry about uh, microphone uh, sounds coming in from all other places of your room. If you're in an echoey room, it'll help uh, keep that, all that ambience reverb 
from getting into your microphone. And what's great about this microphone is it has a little light in it. So when it's on, you see, you can see through the uh, the, the pop filter, so you know it's on. And you and you set set your space. You have your book. You're ready to go. It's that simple. But I do send this all to you: the microphone, the sound isolation screen, headphones. Uh, we go over the the um, program that you use to uh, record your audiobook. It's all part of the uh, all part of the program. But this is yours to keep. It's provided for you. That's part of the course. All right. I'm gonna head on back to the main camera. All right. All right. So um, getting back to uh, the uh, audiobook coaching program details, equipment is provided for you. Uh, audio post editing is provided as part of the course. This is where I take my 20 plus years of audio editing and apply it to your audiobook. And I do all the editing for you. Again, like I showed you, I take your audio files, when you send them to me, I clean them up, make sure they match the exact specifications for publication. And uh, then I send your final audio back to you for you to archive and use for whatever you need it for. Uh, but that's included, okay? Um, also uploading your files for you into Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books. So again, you don't have to worry about it. If there ever is an issue, okay, if there's ever an issue with your files, I know about it right away. I can address it, fix it, re-upload, and it's all good to go. This is all part of the behind the scenes things that happen when you're in the uh, audiobook coaching program. Because all I really want you to do is just focus on doing a great narration. That's it. Do a great narration and I'll handle all the rest. That's what the, the coaching program is for. Now, there are video lessons, of course. Uh, don't worry, it's not like some crazy, you know, 100 videos that you have to watch that are two hours long. <laughs> I keep it nice and short and concise and very informative. And there's also downloads that you can, uh, uh, PDF downloads that you can use as reference material. And in the program, especially with the VIP 101 coaching program, is that we meet every week one-on-one -on -one to go through anything that you need to um, do with your audiobook. A uh, great question. When do you suggest uh, recording an audiobook? Before or after the paperback is published? And do you need an ISBN for it? Um, that is a really, really great question. I think it is best for you to do your audiobook after you've published your ebook or paperback. It, it's, it's the next logical step. Now, however, you can do this, all right? When your book is done, and let's say you've you've uploaded it to to Kindle, and you have your ebook and paperback or or hardcover ready for a, for a book launch, when your book is done, you can start the audiobook process actually. And if you want to plan your launch day, you can do that. You can plan your launch to launch every format of your book at the same time. Um, but that again, that takes some planning and preparation. And that is something that we would go over uh, to figure out what your marketing strategies are uh, when you enroll in the program, uh, which is uh, why before I signed anybody into the program, we have a, a little Zoom meeting first uh, because I do want to talk with you before I get you enrolled so I can find out about your book, find out what your goals are, what your marketing strategies are, where you want to be distributed. Uh, again, the AAA is where you have to be on with Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books. Uh, the link that's uh, scrolling right now is my calendar. Uh, so um, please feel free to book a call because I'd love to talk with you. Um, but we will go over that before I get you enrolled. One more thing that I do want to say about the audiobook coaching program is that I do have a private Facebook group for clients only. So when we're not on a call, uh, if you have any questions or something comes up, uh, post it in the Facebook group and I'll be able to uh, answer that for you. And your questions and what I like about the Facebook group is that you're helping other authors as well who are going through the same uh, process that you are. Uh, so again, it is really important for you to post in there because we are a community. We support each other. We're authors who've written books, who are now taking our book to the next level as an audiobook. It's so important. It's so important to do that. And I do want to share with you this. Uh, this is a, a special offer 
for uh, only people who are attending this masterclass. And I will give you 15% off when you enroll in the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program. But I'm going to throw one of my uh, catchphrases, and it's this. Action takers are success makers. And the only action step that you need to take is just schedule a call. Because I talk to every potential client first before I enroll in them. I want to, again, establish a working business relationship with you before we even get you enrolled. It's not just one of those things where you have to scroll and scroll and scroll through a page just to, <laughs> just to uh, you know, sign up for something and you haven't even talked to the person that you're going to be working with. I want to talk with you first. So go ahead and book your call. I am doing this 15% uh, off offer until next Wednesday, the 15th. And here's one more thing to think about in regards to doing your audiobook. Do it now. Enroll in the program now because you can literally have your book recorded and published before the end of the year. My audiobook coaching program is six weeks. You can have your book done before 2023. What an awesome goal that would be. You know, and, and hey, uh, you as a business, as a business, as an author brand, you need another write off. Uh, for your business, do your audiobook <laughs> and write it off. It's a great thing. But uh, anyway, thank you so much for being here. Um, this has been a lot of fun. There's so much information that I wanted to share with you, but uh, hopefully what I've uh, been able to talk to you about has uh, helped you. And uh, if you are an author, by all means, get your audiobook done. Do it in your own voice. It is so important that you narrate your own audiobook. Again, book a call. Just book a call. That's all you need to do. And that's the first step. And remember, here's my last catchphrase of the day. You are the CEO of you. The buck stops here. Okay. So when it comes to decisions for your business as an author, do the whatever is going to move your business forward and make that decision to turn your book into an audiobook that you narrate. All right, my friends, I think we're, we're, we're out of time. <laughs> time flew by. Uh, thank you so much for joining. You guys are awesome. Go to robertlanecoaching.com for more information. Book your call. You can follow me on Instagram at Robert Lane Coaching uh, and Facebook at Robert Lane Coaching. And of course, there on the website, it's all there for you. I appreciate you tuning into this masterclass. Again, book your call. I look forward to speaking with you. And again, thank you so much for being here. You know what's the greatest benefit of having an audiobook coach? Aside from showing you how to set up your recording space, teaching you how to do an awesome voiceover and narration, and showing you marketing techniques for your audiobook, it's support and accountability. Your coach is your support system, there for you to answer any questions throughout the process. And your coach is your accountability partner to make sure you get the job done.